What is up, folks? Me and my man, Rex, we're here hanging out. Hope everybody's doing good. Say hi to your uh, cats, dogs, and turtles for me. Today, we are going to be... Oh, sorry, did I forget something? Um, anyways, today, we are going to be dyeing some bucktail um, for fly tying. I'm going to be using this bucktail for striped bass flies and maybe some Atlantic stam and uh, spring salmon flies. But uh, mainly it's going to be used for striped bass flies. Yes, Nova, I know you are excited. <laughs> uh, why are we doing this, you ask? Nova, she wants to know why we're dying today. <laughs> well, today we are dying. Nova, I'm trying to do the intro. Stop. Today we are dying bucktail because we are just having um, issues finding the colors that we need locally. So I swung by the local Bass Pro Shops and picked up some white bucktail and some feathers actually. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and get into dying some bucktail and some feathers for the first time. All right, let's go. So, we're gonna start by preparing our material. This is our white bucktail. I've got two. And then here's our white feathers. We'll be dying from white today. Um, gonna do pink, blue, and maybe chartreuse, I'm not sure. But uh, definitely do two batches. So um, here's our feathers. This, uh, Strong rooster saddles is what that's called in our white bucktail. Yes, Rex. So we're just gonna get a little bit of uh, dish soap into our water here. Don't need a lot. And what we're gonna do is just wash our materials. And the purpose of this is just to get as much oil off of the hair as possible. So that when we go to do our dyeing, we'll get as best penetration and as least, uh, at least a, the least amount of uh, dye seepage in the end. So it's just a process that I like to do. This is just lukewarm water, it doesn't have to be hot. I would just recommend lukewarm water and just for whatever reasons, I'm using gloves. So I'll go through and we're just gonna rinse this out. Maybe some clean water, we'll rinse this off. All right, so now that we have everything washed and as oil-free as possible, uh, we're gonna go ahead and fill up our stainless steel uh, pot here with some hot water and go downstairs into the Bushwhackers Laboratories. All right, so the stove is running. Uh, I've got it on a low heat setting. It'll take a little bit to boil this pot of water. Um, really quickly, let's just go over the basic materials that we need to do this process. So for dyeing your bucktail for fly tying, um, I recommend using some sort of dye, obviously colored. Uh, I like to dye from white because you get the most vivid colors. For a bonding agent, what I'm gonna be using is white vinegar. And for my dyes, I'm gonna use two different types of dyes today. What I'm gonna use is Bernard. It's a well-known fly tying company. Powdered dye. Light blue, Cambridge. Hope you can see that. And then the other stuff, I have experience using this last year and really liked it in Aqua, is called RIT. It is liquid and you actually get it for uh, dyeing wools and synthetics, cotton, nylon, uh, and other things, uh, and you can buy it from your local craft stores like Michael's. So, cheap and easy. Also, this stuff is, is not uh, expensive either, uh, but it's just, it's not as easy to get locally. So, without any ado, we need to wait for our water to heat up here. I'm gonna enjoy some coffee, and once this water is up to temperature, we're gonna go ahead and get our dye and some materials in there, and we'll start that process. Okay, so, um, 
we're essentially ready to go here. We have the water up to temperature. It's just a low rolling, slow boil there, which is good. We're gonna go ahead and add our dye. And we're gonna start off with the writ. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and do all of these feathers. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just add in, probably with a cup of vinegar, and uh, I don't have a measuring device, but a cup of vinegar is, is more than what you need. Just gonna... Vinegar is gonna be used as the bonding agent. Helps secure the dye and lock it in place. It also kind of does change the color a little bit, I find, but uh, perfectly all right. Oh yeah. All right, so we've kind of done some testing here and uh, there's our pink feathers. Just gonna need them in the water for a bit. So now we're gonna go ahead and do our bucktail. You know, I've put off this task for a while and I always remember how easy it actually is. It's really not that hard, folks. Don't, uh, don't be intimidated going out and spend some money and having a, some fun on a Saturday afternoon dyeing your own materials. Working from white's always the best. Although it would have been a little bit more rewarding if these were my bucktails I did purchase them. But hey, for the time I have and what I'm going to do here, I'm happy with my decision. This is a lot of ink. Well, we're through most of it now. I'm gonna to start to take the dye out, or the uh, bucktail out of the cold water here. Check it. And I'm really happy with the color. And we're just gonna go ahead and wring as much water out as we can. Okay. And then I'm going to lay it out onto the paper towel and just try and pat it dry. From here, I'm gonna transfer this onto some metal screens and we'll put a heater over there and we'll let that dry. So, we gotta repeat the process, get that done and then yeah, we'll dry this stuff out, get it all over there, heater on, and then we'll go ahead and do our next batch of blue, but we'll probably just kind of time lapse through this one uh, just so you can see the two colors. Well, folks, before we get into this next batch, real quickly, I just wanted to talk to you guys about something that's an upcoming event. It's really exciting. I'm excited for it. I was there last year. Anybody guessing? The Moncton Boat Show and Sportsman and Fly Fishing Show? I think it's still there. But anyways, this year it's actually gonna be a little earlier. It's March uh, 24th, 25th, and 26th uh, at the Moncton Coliseum. I'm gonna be there as a guest fly tire and I'm actually gonna be doing a uh, presentation as a guest speaker Friday night at 4.30, I think. Stay tuned, there's gonna be uh, some more information rolling out in the next few weeks, but I'm really excited. I hope to see you folks, my supporters there, and uh, obviously I'm working really hard this winter getting as many flies for salmon, and striped bass, and even some trout, uh, tied up for the show as possible. So anyways, folks, let's get back to it.
Well, folks, there you have it. We have successfully taken some white bucktail and dyed it into some colors that I was not able to find locally. Uh, and, you know, had some fun doing it. And hopefully some of what I talk about and kind of share with you helps you if uh, you're in a similar situation. Um, by no means am I an expert at this. I've been tying flies uh, for six years or so, I think now. And, you know, I only started dying last year, but the confidence level that I have in this process is good because I used my own flies and my own dyed material from last year. So um, it worked great throughout the season. I didn't have uh, material fall apart. I didn't have dye bleed out on me. Um, so, hey, here's my process. I hope you folks really enjoyed it. Enjoyed it? Um, yeah. Stay tuned for our next episode. Uh, should be coming out in a few days from now. What we're going to be doing is actually using that bucktail that I just dyed to tie up some striped bass and Atlantic salmon flies for opening day of the fly fishing season here in New Brunswick, April 15th. All right, folks, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.